We rescued Chewie at 12 weeks of age. He was found abandoned with his litter mates, his brother and sister, in a garden. They were tied in a bag. They'd got duct tape around their paws, their mouths. Never really identified who'd abandoned the pups. The lady whose garden it was found them, thank goodness, took them to her vet. They put a post on their Facebook page with like, oh my goodness, look at these little puppies. They'll be looking for their homes. So I went down on the train and met him, brought him back first class. The train was actually 15 minutes late leaving Preston because all the Virgin train crew wanted their photograph taken with him. And he's been with us ever since. When we adopted him, we decided that we'd, we'd give something back. In 2019, I read a report on Facebook um, about a puppy that had been found buried alive, very close to where we are now. He was actually sitting on my knee when I read the article, and it, it just rang so many bells that, that there but for the grace of God, for the ones of an expression, that could have been him. Unfortunately, his, his injuries were too severe, he had to be put to sleep. And I thought, do you know what, this little dog just deserves to be forever remembered by this town as a permanent memorial to Shiloh. We planted a tree for him because it's just continually going to grow, it's going to change as he would have done. So one of the reasons why we selected this tree is because it's an evergreen, so it's almost like a symbol of eternity. So yeah, it's just the tree we planted for, for Shiloh. When we first got Chewy, we decided that we'd actually teach him to do CPR on one of our other dogs, just purely as a trick. And that actually proved quite useful, probably coming up for about two years ago now, where he effectively saved my husband's life. Right, he's got quite advanced multiple sclerosis, he's wheelchair bound, struggles very much with his speech now. But it's almost like he's found a way to communicate with Chewie and Chewie's found a way to communicate with him. He's always got one eye on Ray and what Ray's doing. It's just like he's his soulmate. I was actually out in the garden. The two bigger dogs were upstairs. He was with Ray. I've heard him barking, and his barking got more and more frantic. Luckily, the, the French doors were open. I think if the, the doors had been shut, um, I probably wouldn't have heard him. I've come into the house, and Chewie was licking his face, jumping on his chest, licking his face, and I thought, oh my goodness, you know, just, just what's going on? Ray had actually stopped breathing, and then suddenly his heart stopped. I managed to get him onto the floor, did some CPR on him while talking to a, a, an ambulance crew, and Chewie never left his side. It was almost like he was making sure that I was doing everything right. And every day that passes now, I, I just thank whatever's upstairs that we've got him, because without him, I wouldn't have my husband. We're celebrating 30 years of marriage this year, and it's all thanks to this little guy. Sorry. With Chewy, apart from what he did for, for Ray, he's just such a special little soul. You know, his life could have been so much different. His life could have been so tragic. He's just had such a huge impact on both our lives. It's, it's just amazing. <laughs>